Hello Hattrickers, welcome to episode 70 of Let's Play Hattrick in San Marino with Inter Calvajo. It's been a good off-season, a little bonus here to report. Sigismondi Severini was sold for 41,000 euros during the off-season. So a little bonus from the youth department and we'll send our thanks to the youth coaches for a little extra money to help this cycle on its way. A new season is upon us and I will be doing a review of the strength of the different teams in the division once we've seen the first round play out, which will be this Sunday, of course. So that'll be next week's episode that we take a look at that. For now, let's take a look at the youth department and see if we can find a new star for the academy. Let's see, Gabriel Morapito, 16 years old. So that's an easy rejection. Next up, we have Francesco Antonini, but he's also 16. Unfortunately, we have to say no to this guy. The final scout this week, Gian Pietro Capiccioni. Inadequate passing, all-rounder inadequate. That could be all right if he's very young in his 16th year. He's not. So we'll sack him right now. And uh, unfortunately, no rising stars this week. In the training department, we did swap recently to playmaking, and this week we did see Camalini pop from formidable to outstanding. Fraga is a skilled trading player that we are hoping to sell quite soon. And then we have the bake player, Jakub Kiva, popping from excellent to formidable. Now, let's take a look at the sheet. So as you might see here, I did remove a few players from the sheet because they are no longer relevant to the actual training. That was a few goalkeepers as well as the skill traits not included in this one. So right now, the players we are focusing are obviously Sanati, Frangioni and Camalini, the core players of the build, the homegrown players, which are all above 2k HTMS 28. It does look a little concerning for Sanati, but that's because he did gain extra invisible HTMS, if you can say it like that, in defending. And now he's uh, trying to increase it again with the playmaking training. Camelini popping to outstanding here, marked here, as well as the pop to formidable marked by Jakub Kiva at the bottom here. We will be looking to include wingers quite soon, and it will be very interesting to see what kind of deals we can get, because as you might have seen, the market is a little wobbly at this point. With a new season starting to increase the player market prices, and then HGL players being dumped into the market, having the prices fall as a result of this. So it'll be something we'll have to try to see to manage if we can get a few good deals here. But two wingers, we are looking and we are scouting, and I'm hoping to present new players very soon. We did play the first official match of the season against Guedes and it wasn't really a happy encounter. We did lose three goals to nothing and we didn't have much of a chance in this one simply because our chances to score were effectively non-existent and they had a very good central attack. But we did earn 300,000 euros from the first match in the Coppa Titano and well also the last match. But uh, Pretty good. 60% filled Statue della Libertà. But uh, next season, we hope to make it into the second round. That means that we will be competing in the Copa Sesta once more. And uh, the first round match in this cup competition will be against the pop team. So hopefully we can progress to the next round this time around. Sunday evening, we started out the league season against BKS Union Belize, and we did win two goals to one in this one. A match I would have liked to have won by a bigger margin, really, but um, we did come into some trouble with the match engine in this one, and we only won two goals to one. Francioni scoring one of the goals and Ciro Bompen for the win in the 79th minute. We look at the star performances in the middle of the park. The homegrown players are doing quite well. 5.5 stars for Camelini, 6 for Sonati, and 6.5 for Francioni. It's starting to look pretty decent, if I may say so. In the league table, after match day one, we have a fairly familiar side with Berlin United up top of the league. They won six goals to nothing against Fiorentino RSM, a bot team that was swapped into the league because Janis Lancia opted to swap to another series in order to gain promotion, I think. FC Mamante in second, and we are in third after one round. In the next episode, we will be taking a look at each of the opponents in the division for the forthcoming season. But a good start to the season, even though we almost played ourselves into a little trouble already in the first round. Next round, it's away against AC William Solfrey, fellow Danish manager in this San Marino adventure. And we'll be hoping to see if we can beat those guys. Let's just take a look at the numbers before next week's 
match. We have roughly three times the TSI and roughly seven times the wages in average in the top. And we do look like small favorites for this one. That should be an interesting encounter and always important to beat the fellow Danish managers for sure. Before we end, let's just have a quick look at the latest under 17s match. Pelon Johnny, seven stars in the attack here, and we will be promoting him quite soon. And perhaps we might actually earn a little on this guy. We'll have to see two days until we can promote. That will be interesting. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the continued support of the channel. I'm surprised to see the continuous growth of the channel. So thank you so much. If you liked the episode, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next week with a league review, Copa Sesta and another league match. And hopefully I'll be able to present a few new wingers for the build that should be interesting as well. Take care. Bye.